Hello, everybody. Um, so we're entering into the visual analysis um, project now. And um, as a way of kind of uh, introducing this, I wanted to actually do a visual analysis with you. Um, and I'm going to be doing this visual uh, visual analysis on this image um, uh, through the different steps as an example so you can see what um, what is expected of you. Um, Obviously, you're going to be writing this down. I would write this down too if I knew you would read it, but I know most of you probably won't read um, the um, my analysis of it. So I'm going to give you a brief, very brief, kind of um, uh, presentation style um, a visual analysis of this painting over here. This is what's actually not um, the painting. It's uh, it's a print of a painting. Um, entitled The Black Horse Over Bambra uh, by Mark Posselwaith. Now the image that we're going to look at here, I'm going to zoom in so you don't have to see me talking the whole time, um, is, a, is a digital image of, uh, of this print. And so we're going to start with my personal perspective and this is what you should be starting with as well. Now The Black Horse Over Bambra, this, this uh, print here, um, speaks to me on a several levels. First, as a, as a son of the British Isles, the Spitfire, which is the plane in the image, is a symbol of national pride. Um, it was a plane that was a, uh, a great tool in the defense of our nation. Uh, the second uh, way that this picture speaks to me is that my family is from the northeast of England, and Bambra is is an image, or is, is a castle from the from the northeast of England. It's in in itself the castles are symbols of strength and um, and longevity, um, and those things speak both to the castle and uh, of course to the nation. And then finally, I I just love history, uh, in particular two eras of history: medieval history and early modern history, which are both uniquely captured in this image. Now, if you notice, everything that I've just given you right there, except maybe the last piece, is all my own personal feelings about this picture. Um, I like it. Um, I, I respond with uh, levels of pride to this picture. Um, and um, I've, you know, I have personal connections uh, for this picture as well. That is beyond itself is really not important to the overall analysis of my paint uh, of this image but I need to be able to identify all of that right away because since I might have a personal connection to this picture because of the area and my love of history and, and so forth I might overlook some things in my visual analysis or I might um, speak about something in a flowery way in some ways um, later on in the um, in the analysis and so an analysis needs to be needs to be void of your personal in personal view and so this is why the very first thing that we do in a visual analysis is that personal perspective why are we looking at this picture why am I looking at this picture um, and to identify it to get it out on paper, and then to be able to move past it, All right? Right when I speak about this personal connection that I have uh, to this picture, the, the love of it, I, I, my family and the region and things like that, I sh it really shouldn't factor into the, um, the, the analysis later on. This is also why this portion of the visual analysis is only worth five points. Um, it's not that important. Um, but it's important to know where I'm coming from so that I can identify when I move in towards my personal perspective when I'm actually in the analysis. So I've gotten the personal perspective out of the way. I would write this all out. I would then leave it and move on to the next perspective, which would be the historical perspective. And I'll talk more about that in my next video.